Glass, water, wax, and hey there, friendlies, how's up? Welcome to uh, another episode of Dribs and Drams. I got something kind of cool for you today. This is, I don't want to ruin the big reveal. Isle of Rassi R01, first release uh, available in Canada anyway. Uh, and I'm looking forward to trying it out. So uh, let's get into it and then we'll talk a little bit. Little axe action here. How do we get this baby open? Okay, so there's plastic. How do we do this? Just gonna get the plastic off. Safety first, guys. Put this down on the ground. That says right there. R01. Guess I put the axe away a little too quickly. There's a certain amount of pressure to these videos because I can only open these for the first time once, right? So if I duff it up completely, I still have to put that into the video. There we go. All right. Nice cork action. We got, uh, I don't know, this looks like some kind of reference to the, the, the geology or something on here. It looks like strata underneath. It's a nicely printed cork. Time to pour. All right. So look, a um, couple of things here. I have no idea what to expect from this because Rassi is new, man. They opened in, I think, September of 2017, okay? So this isn't like I'm opening an ad bag or something where I've sort of got a sense of the history uh, and the flavor profile. I don't know anything about this. Uh, what do I know? This is the inaugural release that was available you know, generally, they're trying something interesting with their barrels. They call it their six barrel process, but it's actually just three different kinds of barrels. But what's happening in here is that there's peated and unpeated going through those, the same three kinds of barrels in each bottle. So uh, there's gonna be something lightly peated. We're talking like around 50 BPM, 48 to 50. The three kinds of barrels are, you got your ex-bourbon, you got ex-Bordeaux wine, which is interesting. And then you've got virgin chincapin oak, chincapin, chincapin. I don't know, I don't know anything about that, but it's virgin. Uh, apparently it, it's gonna bring a little bit of spice, but not too much. I don't know. Um, I'm hoping that all this extra barreling magic turns into a really cool flavor. Um, so I do wanna say something off the top. Look at this bottle this is gorgeous i hope this is showing up on camera it's like it's imprints of um uh, fossils <laughs> sorry I, like they've gone really into the whole idea of the geology even on the side of the the label here they go into the geology of the area even the box like how the box and the bottle go beautifully together even the box has you can't see it necessarily, I guess, but there's texturing to follow this um, this sort of illustration of the geology. It's just, oh man, just gorgeous. I want to know what that font is for where it says Isle of Rassi. I love it and it says right there, lightly beaded. Oh, I'm excited about this because, I mean, this is the newest of the new for me. I sort of felt that a bit about the, the high coast as well. I knew nothing about high coast. Let's just get into it. Uh, first off, checklist, because checklist affects everything else. Single malt, yes. Age statement, no. What's the percentage on this, 46? 46.4%, so we're north of the 45, which is nice. And no chill filtering, no caramel coloring, and it says it right there. 
natural color, non-chill filter. Thank you, Isle of Rassi. So, I mean, aside from the no age statement aspect, uh, that's, that's big marks. Let's take a look at it. Uh, as I said, since we know that this is natural color, beautiful straw color. Very nice. I'm looking at the, for the uh, for the tears. Some, but not much. So I'm expecting a nice oily mouth feel. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Okay, Let, let's go for it. <clears throat> okay. So there is a bit of peat there. It's not heavy. Absolutely not heavy. Uh, there's a freshness. Lightness, there's, a, there's almost a playful thing happening, a sprightliness, yeah, a dark berries, plums kind of thing. It's not, not big on the apple or, or pear the way some things like the classic Laddy are. There's a bit of that, but it, it, it's a darker fruit flavor, obviously coming from uh, the darker casks, the, the, the Bordeaux. But I'm not getting necessarily red grapes, right? I'm not getting a big hit of, of wine. Not a whole lot of spice on the nose. It's there, but it's not it's not big. The caramel and, and butterscotch and brown sugar notes that you would usually get from something uh, coming from a bourbon cask is definitely not the leading edge of this. Um, it sort of meets the whatever the effect is of the other casks halfway. Fairly balanced. And in fact, with no, no one big thing that jumps out it's, it's kind of hard to find the center on the nose to be honest with you okay there's some spice if you stick your schnoz all the way in there and the fruit becomes much much bigger and there's a weird but i'm getting almost a peanut note in there or that might be like the the cereal aspect of the malt coming in maybe very interesting on the nose I got to I got to get to the palate. Okay. Definitely youthful. Definitely youthful. I would love to know what this tastes like as a 10 year. The nuttiness is is still there. There's a peanutty thing. There's a a maltiness as I said before, dark fruits, almost a jammy aspect. The Bordeaux is sort of coming through almost as a, just a, a misty accent rather than a big effect. I'm guessing that virgin chin cap in oak, uh, it, it's coming through, there's a spiciness there, but it's not like a, it's not a biscuity baking spice. You know how, how cooking spices have a whole different element to them than, than baking spices. You know, there's no cinnamon or nutmeg happening here. It's higher on the tongue, not as warm. This is not a warm taste at all. It's, it's got a, a light, it's still got that sprightly playful aspect to it. This is enchanting and I, I'm looking for bottles in my head to, to compare this to. This is similar to this, similar to that, and I'm not having a very good time trying to find something. This is a slightly hard beggy thing. There's, there, I mean, there's a peated whiskey thing there, but it's, it's like it's calling from around the next corner rather than being right in your face. It does have a nice oiliness. The, the brown sugary, stuff that I get in a lot of scotch is definitely lower in the mix. Dark fruits, but again, like there's no, there's no real single flavor that pops out as the center uh, around which everything revolves. It comes together in a nice way, but I, I feel like I'm floundering looking for the, that, that central flavor. I would like to taste this as a 10 year so what kind of value does this represent? Look, it's not available in Quebec, where I live. Uh, and here we're notoriously overpriced, but this was $100 Alberta dollars, okay? And I think this really needed to be an $80 bottle. I don't think this is a $100 bottle yet. 
And so I don't really think it's all that great a value. Okay, this is awkward. Um, I discovered, there we go. I discovered in the edit that all the footage from me destroying the whiskey with water to the, you know, thanks for hanging out with me, do the following three things, gone. So uh, I wanted to say, um, well, I wanted to do the outro, but I also wanna say that one thing you may have noticed and you will probably notice over the next few videos is that I'm kind of playing with the um, the grading process so we'll see how that turns out uh, man my flame is disappearing fast on me here there we go uh, so yeah uh, as I always say uh, thanks for hanging out with me <laughs> if you like what I'm doing please do the following three things one comment down below do you like professional level videos like this uh, second, please share this video that helps me more than you could possibly imagine. And three, leave me a smiley thumb. If you don't like what I'm doing, that's okay. Leave me a frowny thumb. Thanks for watching, guys. Crap.